This is the tear part of a uh, model 51 Kinetco soft water machine. Uh, pretty much all Kineticos are basically the same. So your uh, your model is going to look a lot like this with the, he the head assembly. Uh, first thing you want to do if you ever work on your machine is cut off the water supply. And in my case, uh, this is my inlet. And this is going into the unit. So we'll turn this one off. This is output going down in the unit. We'll turn that one off. And what you want to do is turn on the, your uh, bypass. So this is your bypass in your house. So now we have taken this unit offline. Uh, this, the machine will start depressurizing a little bit, but uh, you need to take off a little bit of the pressure. Um, I find this is the brine control that goes, uh, the line goes into your big brine tank over here. Up here, uh, you always have positive pressure here. You always have some water coming out unless your unit is in the brine cycle. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. Actually, I'll take it off here. So it's normal for the, this to be under pressure. And since we've taken the uh, system and put it in the bypass with the pipes, the uh, water pressure should lower very quickly. Okay. So you can hear the unit uh, starting to starting to get rid of the pressure. Now there's eight bolts that you want to take apart in order to put the uh, get the unit. Uh, uh, had disassembled. I have a problem with this bolt. I stripped it. I was having so many problems with my unit. I've taken this apart 30 or 40 times in the last few months and eventually this one stripped out. So you're going to want to be careful when you put these bolts back in that you don't want to use too much pressure on your drill. So I think I made a mistake of having this all, all the way on the strongest torque but uh, I, I set it to about three two-thirds of the torque now. But so this one to spin. I have to take it out manually, and the rest, the rest of these will come right out. Also, a good idea to take off this. Uh, this is your backwash just to make it easier when you're disassembling this unit to uh, go ahead and take off the line here. Uh, this is the line where when you're in the brine mode um, you get slow pressure through here, slow water flow <clears throat> and when it's actually rinsing right after the brine mode you get a heavy flow here. I'm going to take this off. I've had so many problems with this unit. It's very been very hard to find videos online, so I'm making this video for everybody else. So hopefully, I'm I'm hoping this video is going to help some people. All right, this is my strip bolt. Uh, also, I'm going to put a another video on how I'm going to attempt to use epoxy in the hole down here to try to fix this bolt hole. Try to get this last bolt out. All right. One last thing you want to do is take off the uh, your in in and out water. I'll give it a little wiggle. This bolt should pop right up. And that comes off. And we'll pull it away. Now you probably should have taken these off before you undid the eight bolts, but. Uh, Uh, usually what you're seeing here on the other side is you should have a couple screens on the input and output. I don't know where mine are. I lost them. I uh, want to go ahead and replace those at some point. All right, so from top down, this is your level one. That's your control disc. Um, there's a bunch of videos online that shows you what all these pawns do, or these pawls and the gears. Uh, this is a common place for... Uh, if your unit's not going into one of the, the modes, it seems to be stuck for a long time in a single mode. Probably have a problem in here. Here's the underside. Uh, you want to make sure these spin freely. Um, actually, this white one's going to spin freely, I think. Uh, 
and here's where the, the water is going to push this one. So just to give it some spins, you just want to make sure there's not a lot of um, resistance. What you're going to find is sometimes this gear will to go out. Um, I've had, I had to replace this one about eight years ago because of where it meets the uh, teeth down here, it had gotten eaten up. I'm looking at it now, it's pretty good. All right, so that's level one. Here's level two. Uh, it's, this is a, um, a uh, uh, what do they call it, pressure. Make sure you don't have an air, it's an air lock. Make sure the air is able to escape from the system. Uh, this is your brine, conf brine flow control. You look through here on the back side, there's a tiny hole here. If you hold this up to the light, uh, you should be able to see some light through it. And I'm looking at it right now, and I can see a, a bit of light through the, the hole right in the middle. Sorry, you guys can't see that. Um, but basically what this is, is a standard, this is a rubber hose. Uh, I've had a bad one of these before. This screen is just covering it to make sure that debris doesn't get into here. But this is just a, um, a black um, grommet looking thing with a hole straight down the middle. You should never uh, have to put any uh, paper clip or anything in here. Um, another thing you can do is blow through it. Blow or suck through it and make sure you have um, some uh, good positive pressure. Or not positive pressure, just make sure there's no obstructions. So this is level two. The top, level two, the bottom. Here's your level two and three assembly. Here, uh, this is the hole that the uh, that brine flow control covers, and this is your um, your brine intake elbow. Now here, there's a tiny screen in here. Uh, this is another common point where some debris might be stuck in the screen. Uh, so, and once again, you can check to see if there's a clog here by just blowing and sucking in it. Actually, I can't seem to suck very much, but I can blow pretty easily. And the water is going to uh, pass through here. There's a venturi inside of here. This is the level two and three. And this opening here, uh, you want to make sure that's not clogged. Uh, you want to make sure this input's not clogged. This is another common area where it can get clogged. Um, now, this I mentioned this is two and three together to take the two levels apart. Just have to wiggle it free a little bit. Might take a little pressure, but it will come apart. Okay, so I'll put this back down in the order. So now this is actually this is three four level three four. So this is the bottom side of three. Um, this is called your uh, venturi uh, throat. Uh, you might have a clog in here, and to take it out, you can just take it out. Uh, okay, so the, here's your venturi throat. Once again, on this side, it's a nice fat uh, hole. On the uh, bottom side, you have a very small hole. So you want to look through it, and once again, blow through it, and sock it, make sure there's not a, um, a problem. Now, it's hard to see in this, in this video. I'm going to post better pictures, but there's a funnel-looking thing here. This is the output, and then the top size is the input. This is where uh, another uh, common, you want to look through there again, and you're going to see a hole. You should see light through it, nice perfect hole, uh, perfect uh, round hole. Suck and blow through it, make sure it's not clogged. Uh, it's very important not to damage this. This is a molded plastic piece. Uh, they warn you not to put a paper clip in there. I find that if you probe it very gently with a, um, you know, maybe a sewing needle, or possibly a thumbtack or a push tack, you should be able to uh, clean it out. Um, just be very gentle with this. Uh, another place where you might have a clog is in here, past the screen. Uh, probably doubtful, but you could take that off and look at it as well. Okay, so this is the top of level three. And this is the bottom of level three. And just show you the when you uh, after you chuck it, this is just push this back in. All right, so this is level four, the um, the top of level four here. That's the output. Uh, what you want to check on here is that um, that these uh, control valves have a pretty good um, seal on it. So just hold it down, make sure that it doesn't look like anything can get past this. 
Um, I've replaced all of these little parts from the Kinetico store. I've replaced this. Uh, there's some that, that have some square looking, um, o uh, not really O-rings, but gaskets here or seals that I've replaced as well. I think I repl I didn't need to replace any of these, but um, you know, I have a newer unit now. And then this is another place, a very common plug. This is called your back wash flow control. Uh, you could also might maybe call it a drain control. You want to look through there and make sure you see light. Uh, and once again, blow through it, make sure it's uh, nice and clean. Front and back. All right, so that was two and three. And now this is level five. Uh, once again, you, these are your drain flow controls, I think. Uh, same thing, they have these, I um, want to make sure you get a nice seal here. Uh, I replaced these as well. These uh, tend to, any rubber in your system is going to tend to swell up. So um, you just want to make sure it seals correctly. I replaced these as well. I didn't think I need, I don't think I needed to. This is one of the few um, movable parts in your system. Just, just, just sticks here. It controls opening and closing um, one of these main valves. Uh, all right, and there's... One other, one other item I've replaced on these units. Kind of find it. It's the regeneration, uh, re regeneration flow. Here, I think it's right here on the side. Nope. Where is it? It's a very tiny grommet. Working. Piece. Okay, yeah, here it is. So this is on your level. Um, see, I think this is your level three. Right here, there's a very small point. You want to make sure there's no. Um, you want, once again, there you want to see a nice, uh, nice uh, beam of light, nice hole. Make sure that's not plugged. Very tiny piece. I replaced this as well. This one really spelled up my old one but uh, looking at the old and new one the hole was about the same size so I don't think I needed to uh, replace that either let's see one two three four five this is your base level this is base number six um, you might have balls here uh, these are uh, check stems in my system the newer systems have these check stems instead of the balls you want to make sure they're they're flowing uh, freely and I guess the only thing is uh, this is the the portion you want to make sure there's no, uh, that this is nice and smooth all the way around. You want to have a nice uh, uh, seal when it, and it plugs against the uh, bottom of level five. So this is where it meets level five here in these holes. So you just want to make it sure. Now this isn't an air, absolute airtight fit. This is a check, uh, check valve, but you just want to make sure it seals fair, uh, fairly uh, I want to make sure it doesn't have a big difference. All right. Um, I'm not going to go any further here, but uh, this is a du dual tank system. You can take this clip off here. Uh, you can uh, unscrew the top here, uh, and you can take a look at your uh, screens. But there's really not much you can do unless you want to uh, take the screens out and dump out all your media uh, to see if there's uh, some sort of clog in the screen. I don't think you're going to, I think, uh, I think what you're find is if your media is old and might swell up and it might not be causing water flow through the system. So if you have a very small trickle through your system or low pressure, it might be time to change the media. All right. Well, this is the tear down. This is the hole I stripped out. What I'm going to do is dry this out and, uh, I'll be back and show you how I'm going to try to, um, fix it. 